Shalom everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Upper Room. Um, very excited, I'm joined by uh, three amazing guests. I think I've, I've got an easy one, basically, the company that I'm keeping right now. Um, Juda- Judaizers, uh, Pharisees, legalists, uh, these are some of the uh, comparisons, insults or compliments, depending on what way you look at it. Uh, are aimed towards those who are in the uh, Torah observant community, the Messianic movement, the Hebrew roots. Uh, it goes by many names. Um, we're essentially disciples of the Most High God, Yeshua Mashiach. And um, we're here to talk about what it means to actually move and operate in spirit and truth. Uh, so without further ado, I'd love to uh, introduce Jackie. Shalom, brother. Shalom, brother. Welcome. We've got our good brother, Joseph. Shalom, bro. And a very special guest, Mr. Kenny Russell. Shalom. Shalom, brother. Pleasure. Um, Yeah, really straightforward, guys. Uh, We'll go for a kickoff. What does it mean to you to actually uh, move in spirit and truth? Oh, beautiful question, bro. Um, Thank you. Thank you for having us on, Daz. Spirit and truth is how we worship the Lord. This is uh, the criteria that's given and, and it's the caliber that we, we we must possess um we know that john seventeen seventeen says sanctify them by your truth for your word is truth yeshua is the way and the truth and the life of life so we have to operate in the word of god and the fullness of the scroll and in the spirit it tells us in ezekiel 36 27 I will put my spirit within you and it will cause you to walk in my ways and my statutes to keep my judgments and to do them, to perform them. So it's his spirit that empowers us and enables us to do this. Well, I like how you come off the top there with some titles that uh, that, that do float around. Um, them who may be messianic or Hebraic in, in the walk or in walking in the ancient paths. But I also think that some of them them titles actually do fit some things that we've experienced. And, you know, we want to come on today and speak about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, got our beloved Kenny here who's who's been round and he, he knows the turf and he's hit some regions up and uh, he's got he's got the good reports and, and he's he's also he's also seen the bad the bad side of, of what what can happen with this movement and what's going on. And We've all come from different backgrounds, of course, but we have seen a lot of ugly things in this uh, Hebraic way. And um, because it is a a new form of revival, but not new in a sense that uh, it is the ancient way, it's new in terms of um, what's been taking place recently after, you know, uh, Constantine and, and Rome. So... We, we have seen some madness and we have experienced the Pharisees and we have experienced legalism. And we want to sift through that and we want to filter that, that garbage out. And we really do want to capture spirit and truth. And many people say, you know, we're all about the law. It's about the law. And then they neglect the, the weightier matters of the law. And the weightiest matter of the law is to love thy neighbor as thyself and to love thy God with all thy heart, strength and soul. And... People are missing the mark, and, and Yeshua said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for you tithe your cumin and mint, yet neglect the weight of your matters of the Torah. And this is what we do see, you know. We see many divisions, we see people coming out with madness, um, and they, 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 they're rolling in, in, in ministries of conspiracies and operating almost quite cultish in a sense that they have their own method the way they do things and, and are prepared to cut people off or if you if you if you disagree the thought police come in and then and, and they shut shut you down and stuff. So you know we, we want to be able to operate in spirit and in truth and allow the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadesh, to be our governance. And um yeah I'd probably just like to hand it over now to, to Kenny and maybe he could give us some background to like some of the stuff he's seen and experienced and I think that uh, I think that would be be interesting because we want to worship God in spirit and truth, and we want to capture that. So, you know, what does that look like to you, Ken? And saying, um, you know, are you seeing that with with, with these new movements that that are, that are taking place? 
Well, you know, it's a very important question. And, you know, look, a lot of people, when we look at the, the New Testament, they call it the Brit Hadashah, you know. I like to call it the Mercianic writings because when we look at the Tanakh, we see everything in there. We see the outpouring of the Spirit. Some of the biggest moves of the Spirit is the testimony is in the Torah, you know, coming out of Egypt is the manifestation of the kingdom. Wow. Man, you're, you're talking about the glory of God. Man, we, we're talking about destroying all forms of evil, the foundation <laughs> of the gospel. It's supernatural. Moses walking up, let my people go. And then, you know, people come into Torah and they get everything right, uh, you know, with uh, the beginning of the book, but they do it without the spirit. And Yeshua said, I'm the way, the truth, and here's the key. He said, I'm the life. Mm. And how do we receive life? Think about that for a second and how we receive life. We receive life when we make a decision according to John chapter 3. Mm. You need to be born again Hallelujah. of the Hallelujah. Spirit. If you're not born again in the Spirit, you don't have the life, the life of Yeshua. So when we talk about Spirit and truth, I like uh, Isaiah chapter 11. It says, and the Spirit of Yehovah shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of Yehovah. Powerful statements that are there. And of course, we understand in the book of Isaiah, you're talking about the evangelist mm. of the Tanakh, mm. you know, the evangelist for some listening, you might call it the Old Testament. But we see um, the prophetic in operation to a level which do we really see that on the earth today? You know, what does, you, what does uh, uh, the Father say within the Word? You can have other religions, right? And <laughs> look at their gods. Well, are they prophesying the future? Mm. Are they, uh, do they have everything all uh, lined up before creation? You know, mm. before the foundation of the earth. What did Yeshua do? He paid the price. Uh, all these things were established before anything happened. And we see that picture as well when we look at, you know, just what was in uh, the tabernacle or what was in the temple. What's the mercy seat doing in the presence of Yehovah in heaven? <laughs> you know, well, the place of perfection. And right there, uh, there's provision that is being made because of what will happen with man. So I want us to, you know, look at the things of the spirit and truth. And, you know, many times I've looked at people when they're coming back to Torah, the very first thing they do is they dismiss the life of the spirit. Mm, right. And they say, oh, we, you know, we just don't understand. We just come back to the roots of our faith. That means every preacher's lying to me. That means I've got a false gospel. So they don't witness. They don't know how to witness because what is the gospel? Is it the gospel I heard in the Pentecostal church? Is it the gospel I heard the, the evangelist? Uh, preaching mm -hmm. and the big uh, Colosseum. What is the gospel now I'm in Torah? How do I understand, uh, you know, in the places where I've been lied to? You know, did I get partial truth? Was it partially right? So what is the truth? And I really believe that when we're dealing with the spirit and with truth, it brings us again to John chapter 14. What does Yeshua say? I've got to go. Why? He came with the fullness of the spirit. So as he walked around, he walked around with the fullness of the Spirit. And he said, listen, it's marriage talk. You know, John chapter 14, verse 1. I'm going to prepare mm. a place for you. Mm. Uh, you're in my father's house in many rooms, paraphrasing, you know. And what's he saying? You know, you know the way to where I'm going. And they're like, hey, wait a second, you know. <laughs> Ways <laughs> is not going to help you in this one, right? We've got to get back to the Scriptures and understand. If You know, it just shows the Father that will be enough for us. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And we start seeing the language and the delivery of how Yeshua operates. You know, it wasn't just about the wow factor. Oh, guess what? Five little loaves, two little fish, great big crowd to feed. Yeah. <laughs> On the day when they came to hear the Lord, right? When he took that bread and he broke it and he fed the people, they ate of the bread of heaven. Mm. And it's, it's, it's a reflection of what happened with the manna when they partook of that which came from a heavenly realm and what did they want to do they wanted to chase him for that which was in the natural right and if we are truly coming back to torah we've got to come back to torah in the way that we engage with far greater authority than just people who have got spirit but no truth 
Right. You know, and, and where there's no truth and you just have spirit, you know, what what is the, uh, you know, the problems that can be formed in that environment? The problems that are formed is, uh, you know, people don't understand that they haven't got the wisdom. And that's what we see in Isaiah 11. It says the spirit of the Lord will rest upon them. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, and I love this, might. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's, you know, that brings order to, to things, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So when we have the fullness of the spirit, it comes with the truth. So when Moses, uh, you know, it says in Deuteronomy, you know, there's one who is coming like me, you must listen to him. So what are we waiting for in the Messiah? We're waiting for him to bring the life of the fullness of, which is by the Spirit from the Torah to us. And that's what Yeshua brought. What is easier to do, the letter of the law or the Spirit of the law? <laughs> because many times you'd think, man, uh, people are like, well, you know, oh, we can't go back to that. That's just too difficult. Well, you think that's too difficult? I think the Spirit of the law is way harder yeah. than the letter <laughs> of the law. <laughs> you know? yeah. Just um, I think with your arrival here in the UK, Kenny and helping our, uh, our ministry with this this apostolic calling, it's come on a very timely um, season, really, because we've just come off the back of baptisms. We come off the back of Pentecost, Shavuot, and during our Shavuot, there was a great pouring of the Holy Spirit, and there was a few people in the build, many people who was baptized by the Holy Spirit, and it was beautiful. and And what we see here with this Spirit and truth for me in the Word. Um, in the way we see the spirit and the truth and we see Yeshua comes along as, as you were saying he says I am the way the truth and the life but if we look in the Bible we also see in Psalm 119 it says thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and the law is the truth so yeah. for me when I'm looking at spirit and truth, yet we have these amazing Pentecost moments, Shavuot moments, where the, the Holy Spirit is given out, people are being baptized, and the Holy Spirit are being filled up. But there's there's a ground in there, there's there's an anchor, there's a root, which is the word, which is the Lord is the truth. That that that's where it brings back to. Otherwise, we can go a little bit off track. What we see with some of these other movements, where you're rolling around drunk on the floor and so forth. So for me, it's very time that you've. Yard has brought you to our fellowship because you've been on this apostolic mission, being out in the streets in Birkenhead and our local areas and teaching and showing how it's to be done. Like, look, yes, it is the ancient ways. It is the Sabbath. It is what, what, what we read about all these beautiful truths. However, let's not quench the spirit uh, alongside this. So I just want to thank you for, for coming to our fellowship and, and taking part in that. So for me, when, when, when I read in the word spirit and truth, it could just as well as be saying spirit and law, because if the law is truth, yeah. then it's spirit and law. And this, this for me, I think, which is, which is the essential ingredients to, to, to walk in this walk with the gifts. Um, so to come bring it back to the question, that's what I would say for me, it, spirit and truth is, is spirit and law and to give that foundation, that, that ground into these gifts. Excellent. Okay, so for a kickoff, we, we, I think we can identify that there is uh, one of the pitfalls we could say is is uh, dryness. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you I, I'm doing the Sabbath. I've got the Moedim. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm 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 being more obedient. Um, but yeah, the, the the spirit can be lacking, and you can be formulaic. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're you're not walking in the fullness of of what the word says. Um, I think it's really interesting you say there, Kenny, about the, the supernatural nature of the Torah. Um, when you actually uh, look at it <laughs> through a dis different lens, it's, it's, there's some serious stuff taking place. Um, so I is it a case where we, uh, you know, we feel like we're getting back to the roots of, of, of the faith, but only to the letter and there's actually more to it? Um, what, what do you think? Is, is, is that dryness something you experienced? Is that part of a, a stripping back so we can walk into the fullness like because yeah that, that seems to be a, a common denominator where we we come to the Torah we come to the truth and we throw all of our cds out we 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 
vow never to drink a drink again and uh, we, we do all these uh, righteous things um, we become dry we become self-righteous we, we become uh, unloving cold and um, you know the Lord fortunately redresses the balance is, is that something you've seen yourselves or experienced yourselves at all bless you bro yeah I think people f- throw the baby out with the bath water it's an old saying and it's like get rid of the bath and the, and, the, and you, you forget the babies in there you know and it's like oh gosh what have we done and but it, it people need to come to a place of maturity and and you know it's okay to to admit you're wrong and i do think that the lord does strip us back and he smashes the altars to bits and you know we can replant and regrow but we need to be uh, have a teachable and uh, and uh, malleable spirit in order to do these things to reconstruct it back because look we know that Religion is infiltrated. We know that Rome is infiltrated. We know that Rome has its has its claws in 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 all the denominations, and we call denominations dominions. You know, so we understand that. But Kenny's right. Like the Torah is absolutely rampacked with spirit, truth, boldness, authority, signs, wonders, miracles. Look at Moshe, Moses. He was baptized with fire in the burning bush and then has a baptism of spirit and pulls his hand out and it's leprous and then he's he, he's healed and it's and then he's moving moving with his staff and it turns in, into the serpent and these are miracle signs and wonders miracle signs and wonders and he's flowing and operating in the spirit with a baptism of fire and it's like wow don't miss that you know moses we're reading them every week if you do the parsha and the parashat He's moving in mighty signs and wonders and miracles. He's moving in mighty signs and wonders and miracles. Just something to touch on there. I think, think you mentioned teachable spirit. Now, something I've noticed is in the Torah movement, I guess to some extent, because this is a, you could say a fairly new movement, a new revival, you could say people returning back to the Sabbath in the grand scheme of things. And I think a lot of people have done their own research since the, beginning of the internet and they've almost become their own teacher to learn about traditions of men and cast aside traditions of men and come back to the word but how far do you go with this you know with this self-taught um ideologies and and what i find happens is is when people discover the sabbath and they start observing the sabbath they keep going they keep going self-taught disregarding and then they come to a point where You've got twelve different rabbis they're answering to online, and I think in, in the in the age that we're in now with YouTube, and, and and having access to all these different mentors, and yeah, of course we we've, we've got to be taught by the Holy Spirit. But the irony is when we come into the the, the the Torah and these things, one of the gifts, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is is one to be a teacher. So we have to remember that. Look, there is people who have the authority to teach, and that might not necessarily always be yourself. So uh, with the access of online and YouTube, we can have so many rabbis, so many teachers, and it, it, it can you can then go too far, I think. And at, at, at what point does one then say, well, look, you know, okay, I've checked this ministry. I've, I've, I've discern, I had a discernible spirit. I'm going to receive from a mentor now in, in a ministry, wherever they're planted online, and then allow the Holy Spirit to really... Uh, who, 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 that person who has received the, the gift of teaching to, to allow the Holy Spirit to move through that person. And I think, I, I, I understand why people have come away from the Sunday church and, and don't want to trust a man again and someone at the front or someone in a teaching position because of these things they've learned. But I think that's probably what the main factor that I notice. It's like, look, okay, let's have a discernible spirit here. There's ministries online. Okay, now, now let's trust that the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit can move through these people and then filter down. So that's something that I've noticed. Yeah. And I think it's quite quite important, really, because I, we, a lot of the times, because we do the online as well, we meet people far and wide, and when they come and meet us for the first time, they're just like a real... <laughs> so much to say, because they've, they've become their own teacher for so long. And and in a sense, they've never had their opinions challenged, challenged or... Um, their thought process is challenged, but what, because we're in a community and and, and there's so many different opinions and iron ideas, sharp and iron sharpens iron. So we're used to this environment. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is, 
it's commendable to, to, to of course, the Holy Spirit is, is, is the teacher, but the Holy Spirit can teach the teachers and the teachers can teach you. <laughs> so uh, allow this gift. The irony is, is allow the gift of teaching the Holy Spirit to, 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 to uh, allow them people to teach you and, and, and yeah. have the discernible spirit to find where to, to uh, just, receive that. I'd just like to add there quick, bro. Like, yeah, I, I agree. And the modern day person is now becoming equipped with Telegram as their set apart assembly, Facebook as their council, YouTube as their pastor, and look, I recognise that some people can't get fellowship. And oh, you, did, you forgot about Father Google, you know? <laughs> <laughs> father, yeah, yeah, Google yeah, becomes yeah, the yeah, father. I'm just praying to Father Google, you know, if he's got the answer or yeah. not. You know? Wik- Wik- <laughs> Wikipedia starts becoming, you know, the 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 trans the the translator for you know certain scholarly issues and. Before you know it, you end up with this mishmash and we're told not to be tossed to and fro by mm. everyone in the doctrine. And mm. it can be dangerous, yeah. Mm. Um, Kenny, for w- one for you. Obviously, uh, only been slightly older than our good selves. Um, you would have seen the early uh, beginnings of this revival, this movement, this Hebrew roots. Um, just if you could, uh, a br- an overview of how you've seen this develop uh, over the years. Um, maybe some of the pitfalls you've witnessed and uh, how you see the the current current climate of because surely like Hasatan isn't going to just like <laughs> leave something good alone. So we're probably right. in a very uh, targeted position for the enemy for these doctrines and and and, and these practices and these cultish uh, things to, to to turn up. Um, yeah, what's your view of how that's developed over the years? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting, you know, you go into little pockets and people are like, well, this is all really quite new, and then you start travelling the world and start <laughs> finding that. <laughs> you know, there's people been walking in Torah for, you know, sure, 40 sure. years and stuff, you know. Um, but, you know, one thing the Father has done in my life, like when I woke up to the understanding of Torah, I didn't join the Hebrew Roots Movement. In fact, we called our centre in the Galilee the Hebrew Roots Center, and I never even heard of the Hebrew Roots Movement. <laughs> right, wow. You know, and, um, you know, I've, I'm well-traveled, I've been around, and uh, when I took the first message, uh, you know, of really coming back to Torah and the importance of it, I took the message, you bake a cake to the Queen of Heaven, uh, you know, from Jeremiah, but you come into my presence, I will not receive your worship. And the Holy Spirit said, I want you to go tell the Church of America that word. Get off the sand, it's time to stand on the rock. I went out to the States with that message. I never heard of Hebrew roots groups. I never even knew any of them. And I just went to the church and we saw thousands of people coming back to Torah, waking up to the Sabbath, coming back to Torah. Thousands. Hallelujah. And, you know, I'd be be preaching to leaders and, and explaining to them that the Torah is for today. The Torah is life. It's not dry legalism. It's life. It's understanding our identity, who we are, mm. and you know, through that journey, I did. I did see the the pitfalls that were in more of a Hebraic environment, mm. because of the hurts and the pains and the things they had been through through the church. Look, there's a lot of stuff out there that is called spiritual, where you know. Just people don't have the discernment to, to recognize those false spirits in operation. Mm, mm, mm. We know that the enemy, Hasatan, he parades as an angel, angel of, of light. light. So he wants to copy things and make it look like it's right. Mm. And, you know, we've got to be able to discern that. And how we discern it is not from the basis of just tasting everything. And I'll, I'll just try this and see how it goes. And if it's not God, well, maybe he'll just wake up and show me it. No. But what we should do is we should be so immersed within the truth. And this is what they do when you're dealing with counterfeit money and real money. You know, the training to understand and and see counterfeit is not to spend your whole day studying counterfeit. It's to spend your time working with that which is real. And this is what we need today. We need leaders that rise up, that know how to identify where the errors are and speak out against these things. And what's happened is when people stand up and speak out against these things, the people like to label them and push them down. Oh, you're just all negative. You're just looking at all this and going, you know, down these channels. But, you know, there needs to be a warning. 
uh, over these these uh, false anointings and things that's happened or are happening. You know, in in the Hebraic walk and those following Torah, you know, I've met many people that are like, well, you know, if, if, if this believer over there doesn't understand the Torah, doesn't keep the Sabbath, doesn't keep the feasts, well, you know, he's going to hell. He's not, he's the, you know, he didn't say Yeshua, he said Jesus, so he's not saved, you know. And, and we see all these errors, different things that are portrayed out there. When here's the reality, you know, many people came from the church world. Mm-hmm. The, the question is, when you had that born again experience, you were saved. So when you come into Torah, you know, you're not born again again, mm. you know. You, you know, what's happening is truth has been revealed. When I walked into Torah, I asked the Holy Spirit, why didn't you tell me this 20 years ago? I, you know, Listen, I'm your servant. I would have had no problem. And he said, it wasn't the time, but this is the time. And I thought that was really interesting. You know, sometimes things are hidden for a certain day. That's right, and, yeah. and we do know in the scripture, you know, the, the that. Yeshua, he'll leave the 99 to go after the one. So we want to identify that which is real. So if we throw away the gifts and we say they're not for today or, you know, look, especially like let, let's just, uh, you know, throw out uh, the one that causes the biggest trouble, baptism of the Holy Spirit or speaking in tongues. Right, go on. Speaking in tongues. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> right, listen, you know, look, yeah. Uh, <laughs> An interesting uh, point to look at, you know, because the people who are not filled with the Spirit, the the operating the gifts, they're the ones teaching you, oh, you know, they'll show you pictures of everything that's bad. So they'll go on the internet and they'll get, you know, this one laughing like a drunken maniac and someone prophesying, you know, like a, you know, a, a kangaroo that fell off, <laughs> <Gosh>. yeah, whatever, <laughs> you know, just something totally weird, barking like dogs and crazy stuff. You know, that's not reality. No. Mm. Uh, we, we go and we, we should take our example from the word and, you know, in uh, Acts chapter 10, you know, when uh, uh, Peter was speaking at Cornelius' house, of course, that was my house. That's where I lived in Casaria, you know. So I, I always tell people, when you come and see me there, you've come <laughs> to Cornelius' house, you know. <laughs> but, you know, what they said, the account is very interesting. So we know the account at the beginning of Acts. You know, the 120, you know, flames of fire, pour out pour in the spirit. Everyone heard them speaking in their own language, right? Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't like two people over there shouting towards the ones that spoke, uh, you know, Aramaic or this one that, that speaks uh, whatever the language is, you know, of all the languages that were spoken. But in uh, Acts chapter 10, it says right at the end when the outpouring fell at Cornelius' house, there wasn't a bunch of people all speaking different languages. There wasn't a whole bunch of nations that were represented there. It says in verse 44, when Peter was still speaking, these words, the Ruach HaKodesh came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers, that's those who had experienced the first outpouring, right, who had come with Peter, were astonished that the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh had been poured out even on the nations, on the Gentiles there. And they heard them speaking in tongues and praising Elohim. Now, what was their testimony at the, oh, where's my verse here, on the end? Uh, basically, he heard them uh, speaking, and th- then Peter said this, Surely no one can stand in the way of, their being, of them being baptized with water, for they have received the Ruach HaKodesh, just as we have. So we have to weigh Scripture with Scripture. So the way that they received it was the same way it was, was received at the outpouring in Jerusalem. It was mm. the same. So when they heard it, they didn't go, oh, that's a foreign tongue. Oh, why, man, why are they speaking gibberish over there? Or, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't recognize that language. Oh, let's just all hold that to account. They said it was the same. And this was the confirming factor. It was the same. And, you know, you look at the Tower of Babel and the confusion and stuff. What was it that the father did? He separated them because they were in unity towards evil. And, you know, that's where all the languages came in uh, across the nation to bring confusion. And here we know that the spirit brings us to the place of unity, so, yes, you can have tongues that are speaking in a foreign language. We hear accounts of that from time to time. But one thing we definitely recognize, that when people are filled with the Holy Spirit, and I'm not saying that the sign of being 
uh, baptized in the Spirit, speaking in tongues. I don't believe that's a, a biblical uh, um, theology that, that's outlined, you know. But I believe that the gift of tongues, you know, what did Paul, um, uh, Paul say? He said, I speak in tongues more than all of you. And the purpose of tongues with the individual is that we are edifying and building ourselves up. And, right. you know, I, I love when I'm driving, I'm, I'm praying in the Spirit all the time. I've seen some incredible breakthroughs in the Spirit. I've, in, I've, I've received revelation because I'm praying in the Spirit. It's not about, you know, being in public. It's a prayer language. It's something that we are engaging in. So I believe a lot of people have misunderstood mm -hmm. Because you have people who don't have the gift, so they're trying to tell the other people, oh, well, you know, we might have come out of the Baptist church into the Hebraic, and, you know, we don't believe in speaking in tongues and these types of gifts, so we're just going to put the plumb line down in the Hebraic environment and, and not experience it. And, you know, I was sharing, you know, while we're having a curry, oh, that was so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, having a curry in Britain. <laughs> you know, if my daughter was listening right now, she'd be like yawning, thinking, how many times have you got to have a curry, you know? But, you know, what now, now you speak in tongues of fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> tongues of when you've had the chow phrase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, I was at one of the conferences, of the main conferences of the Hebraic, and, you know, I ministered on uh, prophecy, healing, and tongues. And I witnessed there on the last uh, session I did there, it was, it was like a day of Pentecost moment. It was like Cornelius' house. I saw literally so many people being filled, transformed, singing in the Spirit, mm -hmm. uh, speaking in tongues for the first time. I watched the glory of God manifest, and even people were coming out of other breakout rooms in the in the conference, and they were just walking in the presence of the others, and they started speaking in tongues. And for many of them, that was the most foreign thing you could ever imagine. Like they didn't wake up in the morning and says, "Hey guys, <laughs> I'm, you know, you know what we're going to do at this Hebraic uh, <laughs> conference today? We're all going to be speaking in tongues and prophesying." <laughs> no, they didn't wake up thinking that. And you know the amount of testimonies that came out of that. And they realized, you know, it wasn't just about that moment and the fact that they spoke in tongues. But I still speak to many people after. Years later, they say something happened when they received that gift. The edification, the, the way they moved, the way they operated, the way the Holy Spirit spoke to them moved into a whole new dimension. So, you know... Uh, Look, I was brought up as a good Baptist, and I was telling you the story downstairs, you know, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and I came into the, the fellowship one day, and I heard these two old ladies, Mavis, we over prayed for Kenny Russell, <laughs> you know, he's not a Baptist, he's a Pentecostal, you know, and I, look, I never knew about denominations and different things, if we just will take the word for being the word, we'll realize, you know, we need this. But yes, there is false stuff out there. Mm. Mm. And this is what we've got to be careful about. You've got the Kindalini, the false anointings. You've got all these different things that are being uh, forced, especially on youth culture. Truly. Right. 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 And, you know, it is, it's, it's very damaging to, to think of all these things that are happening. But... Just because you've got that false and you've got the things going on, you know, it's no surprise because the enemy, he parades as an angel of light. But right. that doesn't mean you throw out that which is righteous yeah. and yeah. that which is good. So where is the power? Where are the signs and wonders in the body of Messiah, which we see in the Torah? Mm -hmm. It is full of signs. I, when I preach the gospel... Man, I, I sometimes, uh, you know, pretend, oh, there's no New Testament. You know, just imagine, if I'm one of the early disciples, I don't have the Gospels. Right. So how do I preach to the Jews in the land of Israel that are religious? I don't open up the New Testament. I just open up the Torah, and I preach the Gospel with signs and wonders and miracles. Hallelujah. That's right. Well, yeah. um, so I, I think you can build a picture where it's almost like a, a reflection. On one hand, you've got, the Torah, the legalism, the uh, the pitfalls, the dryness. And on the other hand, you've got the charismatic Azusa Street, NAR, um, bastardization, uh, I don't mind using that word, of what the gifts are. And we're kind of somewhat stuck in the middle right now where a younger generation who are hungry and thirsty for, for, for Yah's ways 
um, to, to walk in the fullness of the scroll, but yet uh, the, the, the waters have been muddied. Do you think that there's, uh, uh, it's like an equal, um, how can I say, an equal mim- mirroring? Because apostasy isn't something you've come across in a lot of Christian uh, denominations, uh, but that can be found within the Torah movement. Um, but you're not going to see people roll all in round barking like a dog, you know, on a Saturday Shabbat, uh, Shabbat congregation. But you could go somewhere on a Sunday and there's... So uh, where where do we lay in that landscape and how do we walk in that fullness? Like how do we, um, like we say, not throw the baby out with the bathwater and actually... Because I, I, I want to operate in these gifts, you know. I, I, I'd love to receive that and walk in the fullness Maybe it's Yah's timing. I, I'm not so sure. But how do you feel about this this landscape that we find ourselves in? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And I think a lot of people and a lot of listeners online will be thinking the same thing. And I guess w- when we're looking at the faith as a whole, and I, w- I was quite similar to Kenny when I first come into this walk, I was like, wow, there's so many denominations and what, what's going on here? You know, are we, are we just reading from the same book? <laughs> and I think a danger what we can do is, especially if we're coming from maybe a uh, Sunday church background, or I don't even, you know, just traditional sort of Christian background, is we can notice the religiosity within it and give that up, but then still in the same spirit step into another religion, which can be heavy with rabbinical judaism and the talmud and these other things so i think for me is 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 the answer to the question is to start taking the bible as the 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 authority and with these gifts and traditions that we see we really need to weigh them up with the bible is this in scripture okay do we see someone rolling around like a dog barking saying i'm full of the holy spirit in the scripture no that's just Madness out of the out of this world, but then these other traditions that we're we're seeing in coming through um, the, the the Talmud and these other things are we are we seeing this in the word? No, no, not either. So I th- I think for me it's 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 taking the Bible quite literally, and I think that's that can be a lot hard for a lot of people to hit. Uh, me hard for a lot of people to to, to to hear that because they may have grew up and for oh you know that's the old testament and these things happen in the old testament but kenny was right you know that the the spirit is in the old testament and these aren't stories these are historical accounts Mm -hmm. that that are taking place you know we 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 see the spirit pour out on the 70 elders Uh, um uh, uh, the spirit from moses is 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 given to the 70 elders just as our yeshua the, uh, the, the, the the spirit from yeshua was poured out to the disciples and 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 his um, 70 that was with him also so I think we've got to strip it right back to the word and this for me comes back again to trusting in in the in in, in the spirit of the gift of the teaching you know this this is what it comes down to because when you first come into this walk you, you're gonna get so much coming at you and you're gonna need a guide and of course right. the Holy Spirit is our guide and of course we must always return back to the Bible and he will teach you through the Bible but but that is all our authority if it's not in the Bible I don't want it and that's that that's where it it, it ultimately comes down to you're, t- to you're talking about the safe place mm. and and this is what's important we need that safe place mm-hmm. where yeah. things operate you know it's not about everything and anything can go right right you know if someone brings forth a word even when people are right in the spirit even in the scriptures you know yeah. they they understood the importance of prophecy. But, you know, if you receive a word of prophecy, it says test Mm. the spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, and if you find it's not true, you say, well, listen, you know, we've tested that in the spirit. Uh, We're not going to accept that word right now. So we need the discernment of the eldership in that place. So there there is an order that we see even in the midst of the flow of the spirit. Why, Why are you waiting in Jerusalem to receive power from on high? Yeshua says, don't leave until you receive power from on high. Well, we know what they received because they waited 10 days after Yeshua ascended, right? And, you know, we see what was taking place uh, at that day. They had to have that power. 
And if we truly have the Torah, and you know, look, there's uh, in the Torah movement, I don't know if everyone understands that Smith Wigglesworth had a powerful prophecy about the greatest revival that's going to happen is when the Spirit, um, uh, when, when the Word and the Spirit come together, it will create the biggest revival the world has ever seen. And we are coming into that moment. Right. You know, and, you know, there he was, a plumber. You know, he had a lot of problems in his life, a lot of stuff, anger, resentment, all that, and Holy Spirit transforms him. Man, he was the one dragging, he was dragging bodies out of the coffin and throwing them off the back wall. Man, could you imagine doing that at your grandmother's funeral? Uh, right. You know, like, wait a second, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and they came back to life. You know, he was, he was in a, an event and someone died in his meeting. He walked up, he says, pick the guy up, and he smacked him one, <laughs> right? And he fell down. He says, pick him up again. He didn't go, oh, well, I tried. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Picked him up again, smacked him again, fell down again. And everyone's in shock. Mm. Then he said, pick him up again. And he smacked him again. And this time he comes back to life. So we see, why did he do that? It wasn't just that he was angry because the guy died. He had the word of Yehovah. He had the word of the Lord. And this is what happens when we um, are operating in the gifts of the Spirit. We're operating in the power of God within our lives. And... If we have Torah, we still need the word of the Lord. That's right. We need the, the Logos and we need the Rema, the living word. You know, these are not Pentecostal ideas. These are biblical foundations that we have to understand. And, and the purpose of being born in the spirit and receiving power from on high, you know, it's, it's what we see in, in Romans uh, chapter 8. It says, you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if in fact the spirit of Elohim dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Messiah does not belong to him. So how are we recognized to be his disciples? It says, you will do what I've been doing in greater things than these because I go to the Father. Amen. Yeah, I'd just like to add there, bro, I think self-control, as Galatians speaks of, self-control is massive, and that's really when you see people coming into the maturity is when they have self-control. And I think that the words and um, as Moses was moving in the in the prophetic signs, wonders, miracles, authority, he was also having the word of the Most High, communicating with him audibly, which is huge. And I think Moses was the most humble man. Humility is huge. Uh, keeping yourself low. And also, uh, in self-control, we have to have an obedience by faith. You know, James says, I'll show you my faith by the works that I do. And this this co combination creates that, that, that beautiful divine caliber where we can operate in the prophetic then because it's self-controlled, it's mature. Um, and we have the words, which is order. And, and it's, it's legal. So it's, you know, we're not all breaking out doing this in tongues, we, we're having translations, or if someone's praying, th then it's permitted because Paul says allow it to be permitted. But we haven't got a whole congregation doing it. New people walking through the door going, wow, this is like, this is the loop factory. Get right. me out of here. This is la la land. Right. It's controlled, you know, it's precise. Um, it's, it's, it's got, it's, it's, it's got a foundation in the Torah, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we have to have that foundation in the Torah because. You know, I'm always skeptical when, when people haven't got that, that that foundation in the Torah because the, the law is, is, is legally binding and, and it does bring a level of, of, of boundary and um, th that we, we need that. We need, we need that yeah. as, the, as the believers of God. Kenny, you mentioned there about uh, seeing this in the latter days. Well, Joel, Joel tells us that. Joel 2 That's says, right. yeah. In the last days I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh. You know, all men will dream dreams. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy in my name. You know, if we think that we're in the latter days, well, this is going on now. Yeah. And we want to walk like the early church. We want to walk like the disciples. And this is, this is, the, this is the ultimate one. We want to replicate Yeshua. He did the signs and the wonders and the miracles. The greatest, yeah? Amen. One perfect man in the scripture. But he also kept the Torah and kept the law. And he said, my words are not my own, but my father that sent me. So that's when I'll get down with it, you know. And if you, you're in the Torah, I'm down with it, you know, because I know you're going to have that self-control package. Yeah. You're going to have that self-control package because you, 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 you've entered into maturity there.
Yeah, and just speaking on Yeshua there, if you think of his ministry, many times he said, okay, everyone leave the room, leave me in with this person um, before I, I pray and, and um, try and resurrect the dead. Or he would allow people to approach him. There mm-hmm. was, there was a le- like you say, there's a level of um, authority there being given. There's, it wasn't showmanship, you know, what we see now. It's become a bit of a, a, bit of a show and a spectacle where it was very uh, discreet and, and had a shrewdness to it and, a, and a, like you say, a, a humility, a purity to it, a, a, a sincerity to it. And I think that's what we need to replicate. I remember I was speaking um, to, to my area manager in, in, uh, in work and I was telling him about the Sabbath because he was saying, Jack, why do you, get, why do you have every Saturday off? And I was preaching on the Sabbath and the rest. And then he, he said, well, I tried to go to a Christian church uh, home group once and I walked in and he was all laying hands on someone and, 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 and all the tongues was going off and, and, and I got scared and I, and I haven't approached faith since and I thought, oh my gosh, wow, this person was seeking mm. something and the way this was handled, there was no wisdom, you know, in, in our church at least, if someone wants to receive prayer or something intimate like that, we take them into a separate room. Yeshua said, get out the room, leave me, leave me with this person now. You stay in the room, but everyone else leave and I think... It's removing the showmanship of this and and allowing the testimony to be the one who's healed. You know, I think that's something quite big as well. Let let the let the one who's healed speak speak greater. You know, of these things than yourself. I'll, I'll, you know, Yeshua said, "We're well, going yeah. with the people who was who was healed and and, and, and and received these miracles." They was the one to to, to preach and and to, and to save the great things of the master. So, yeah, I think I, I, I think with these principles in mind, what you say, I, I think. Um, this is how we can then find a balance coming back to spirit and truth again. There's a there's a protocol to this. There's a priestly service to this. There's a priestly order to, yeah, to this. And unless you're going through the book of Leviticus, you don't see these things. You know, unless, when we say we're all priests, um, of, you know, of the order of Melchizedek. Well, if if we haven't went through the Torah. We, what what is a priest really? Is it is it is it someone who has an Instagram page and 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 and, and has a live stream of laying hands on someone and that person being delivered? No, there's an order to these, these things. There's a discretion and, and and a training as well that comes along with it. So, I think one thing what I, I really like with our fellowship and I'd like to think with others is there's 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 a discretion and a, and a and a and a training that takes place. Um, before those step into these gifts, uh, um, you know, uh, ultimately. Yeah. No, uh, perfect. I mean, uh, I think there's a misconception even in the scriptures that the laying of hands is is something that's uh, to do with healing, but it, it, in a translation, it's the anointing. It's mm. the position uh, for somebody to, to, to receive a gift or re- receive a station. Um, just, uh, I just wanted to send this one out there to you, gents, right? Um, um doing the sabbath i'm doing the moedim yeah. i'm being obedient i'm keeping the kosher laws i've got my seat seats on but i'm struggling i don't really i don't i don't feel comfortable praying in front of people when the worship music comes on i don't i like lifting my hands up and clapping i just feel like people are watching me when i'm at work i don't really know how to share my faith i, I, I i'm a bit scared that people are going to think i'm strange i don't know if i can pray for for my brothers and sisters who, who are around me what do you say to that? Because th- I think that's that's probably more common than we'd like to admit. And if we're going to the 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 nth of the of the scale, as as, as Kenny's so uh, rightly saying, where you're stepping out, you're being bold, walking in signs and wonders, and all of this. But my man can't even pray for his brother or sister. Like, what what do you say to that? What, what, any words of encouragement? What like? Because th- let's not be naive. I think this is probably more prevalent than than we might care to admit. Yeah, brother. Um, we do, you know, it, it takes place and these things are complex, you know, because you could be dealing with fear of man, uh, certain spirits, the spirits of, of rejection. You can be dealing with v- very complex things. But I always recommend intimacy with God um, and having a, an intimate relationship because the more you, you spend in his presence, the more he is going to empower you to do the radical yeah. And as you become more empowered through intimacy, that becomes the most intimidating thing the enemy uh, the enemy feels. And and you will just be empowered in a supernatural way. And that's when we're going to see true breakthrough occur. Okay? 
but you have to get into that secret place. Listen, the priest went beyond the veil. The living sac, the sacrifice there, that was on display. The washing, that was on display. They went beyond the veil for the intimate place. And what we do in secret, the Most High God shall reward us in in, in openly. Amen. Amen. Kenny. Yeah, I think um, you know the the verse that is so important on this. You know, look, we're on a journey, and it's not about judging people in the place of weakness, what we've got to learn to do as believers, doesn't matter what level or, you know, where we've come from. Like I call myself an introvert. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone laughs. What yeah, are you talking right. about? <laughs> You're an introvert. Well, maybe I started off that way like an introvert, right? But because of pushing out, and the, 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 the word I want to share is, you know, Romans chapter 12. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of Elohim's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living Mm. sacrifice, holy and pleasing to Elohim. This is your true and proper worship. So it's not about the music, the singing, Mm. the dance, and all of that type of stuff. And that's good. And we we love that. We love, you know, I'm a drummer. I like to bang something, you know, and just, uh, you know, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It says, do not conform to the patterns of this world. And, um, you know, when we're dealing with, you know, Romans chapter 8 is a great example. You know, we're walking in the flesh or walking in the spirit. But the, the thing that we see here in, in chapter 12, don't conform to the patterns of the world. He doesn't just stop there. It says, yeah. but be yeah. transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, right. so where, where the Holy Spirit finds you is not where he's leaving you. Wow. Amen. And, you know, the part and the, the process of discipleship, you know, as for all the years of experience on the streets, a lot of times when someone gets saved, if I'm working in that same area for six months in the streets of London or whatever, then that person gets saved, you know, five minutes later, we're ministering, or 20 minutes later, we're ministering to someone else. And I'm like, share your testimony. What happened to you? <laughs> yeah, wow. And, and they, they're sharing, and they're the ones laying hands, and we're praying because you're, you're leading them by example. We're saying, now we're going to, remember we laid hands on you and God delivered you from drugs. You were just supernaturally delivered. It's 20 minutes ago. Well, I'm being a doctor, I'm God test. <laughs> Listen, you're supernaturally transformed. You know, just had uh, Russell with us today on the streets, you know. And when he had that encounter with Yeshua, he got totally delivered from drugs in a second. And he knew it. He was transformed. He took all the drugs down to the police station. Wow. And handed them over and said, oh, I found Jesus. <laughs> I'm never going to need this stuff again. You know, being transformed with the renewing of, of your mind, then you'll be able to test and approve what Elohim's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We have so much confusion because the problem we have is we want to learn information mm-hmm. rather than learn to die to self. Right. So we can walk in the spirit. So that person who's the introvert, that person who's quiet, that doesn't know how to share their faith with someone, um, you know, in their work. You know, I I remember one time, you know, I was at work in a dairy in in Bracknell and I had my Bible and I'd just go sit with my Bible. And there's the the canteen for the business had over, well, 800, 1,000 seats and a big canteen. And I'd be sitting up at the back and I'd have my Bible. I'd go get my lunch. I'd sit and eat my lunch. And the Holy Spirit would have people come along and sit with me because they're like, they see me with a Bible. They're like, man, what, what's Kenny Russell doing sitting? I'm not quiet. I'm not standing up preaching. And then one day, you know, after months of sitting, reading my Bible in the workplace, just talking to people, an individual from, from time to time, this guy gets up, one of the tough guys in the Bracknell community. You, Kenny Russell. Why don't you just shut up about your Jesus? And the entire canteen full of people, including the kitchen, just stops. Boom. (laughs) I'm like, wait a second. You know, (laughs) Kenny Russell's happy sharing one-on-one here right now. But then the boldness of the Spirit, and this is what came on Peter on the day of Pentecost. Right. The boldness, he stood up. He didn't stand up and say, hey, I've got to tell you about, you know, the times I failed, Yeshua. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, that's not what happened. He's, you know, and I stood on, wow. the, ch- I stood on the chair in front of a thousand heathens, right, or 800 heathens. And I said, why don't I shut up about my Jesus? Let me tell you about it. And I shared my personal testimony of how he supernaturally transformed my life. My man just gave you a platform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so the devil wow. thought he was trying to shut us down, That's and it opened 
things up. So if, if you're listening, watching right now, and you're thinking, well, yeah, I just don't have the boldness, man. You're just talking way out there. Let me tell you something. When we uh, are transformed, we start to see the power of God. It wasn't my strength. It wasn't my ability. Listen, I can't sit here and say, look what I did, because it was all the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's and right. and that's the testimony from that day through to this day, many years later. You know, man, I, I tell you, some of the greatest messages I've ever preached that's gone all over the world and transformed thousands of lives, right? I didn't even have notes. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, and you're like, what? You know, did that just happen? I didn't even know it was going to happen like that. Yeah. Worry not for what you will say because the spirit will intercede. <laughs> That's right. And the moment we start putting them notes, you know, it can turn into our venture, and, right. and we can we can we can diminish or dissolve or, or dilute. Uh, bro, what you said there, you know, about less information. You know, we don't need information. We need inspiration, Amen. which is the true innovation of, of what we want to do. Because when we are inspired and invigorated, that's the true in innovation of what we are going to see where, pe where people cannot deny that transformation. So we, we, we don't need information. We need, we need in inspiration. Amen. You know, there's one point I just want to bring up. We talked on the Eller show about boldness. What is it that brings forth boldness? It's not in the incredible ability of all the knowledge we have and how to divide the word. It's when you hear the word of the Lord. Mm. And, you know, that's what brings forth the release of true boldness by the Spirit. It's when he speaks. Amen. And, you know, that's Christ in us, the hope of glory. That is him operating through us, you know, that we spread his fragrance and knowledge through his boldness because he speaks the word. So the question that I want to put out to those that are listening and watching, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you today? What's your fear? Are you in fear of the things that are of the Spirit? Mm. Because many times when things happen, the very first thing you think about is, you know, you experience in the flesh the fear. Like when that guy stood up and said, shut up about your Jesus, yeah. the very first thing that happened, my heart goes... <laughs> You know, I wasn't I wasn't thinking boldness, right? But then when I took a deep breath, I got filled with the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And, you know, that's what will bring the release in these things. Yeah. That's powerful, powerful. And just to end there as well, you know, if you're thinking, well, that's just not me. Look, boldness can be, it, when, you, when you can be quiet, Yeshua was, was, do you think Yeshua wasn't being bold when he stood before Pilate? and was silent like a lamb to the slaughter, mm. you can be bold by being silent as well. You know, Solomon says, there's a time to speak and there's a time to just shut up. And I've seen people operate boldly when they say nothing as well. So, you know, I didn't, I just didn't want people to think, oh, I've got to be this mouthpiece of, right. of, of pure brass and just get out there and start. The spirit must do the talking. And as you said there, that's what you know what you will say because the spirit will see for you. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah, that's 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 absolutely beautiful. Um, and just for the record, that description I gave was me at different points in my walk. Mm. I was scared to say hallelujah. I was scared to pray. I was worried about what my work co-workers would think. But then, like you say, that you step out once and then you step out twice, and before you know it, you you're walking uh, a lot less in the fear of man, shall we say? Um, can I just add one yeah. more thing, bro, yeah, before yeah, you ask your me, next, next question? I think really it's important as well to be around the body right. because we are sheep, you know, and we have a herd mentality and we will follow, sheep follow one another, you know, they all yeah. look the same, they all go back and, and, and they, 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 they gather together and the behaviours and the patterns are, 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 are mirrored. Yep. And I think if you if you are immersed with the right people who are having intimacy, if you're immersed with the right people who are walking in spirit and truth, if you're immersed with the right people who operate self control, who who use the, the gifts in a controlled manner, well, <laughs> there you go. You, you will likewise replicate that. Amen. The company you keep is huge, you know. Mm. Um, it, it's interesting because obviously. Uh, Yah has given us all different attributes, different qualities, different personalities. So, like you say, it's not all about the mouthpiece. It's it's not all about the uh, you know the loud, the the the, the well spoken. Um, he obviously uses all of us in 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 different ways. Now, I think a lot of these um, 
uh, more supernatural elements uh, can maybe prob- possibly be more attributed to the evangelical side, mm-hmm. to the being out there, the healings, the gifts. W- w- how do you feel, uh, you might need to think about it a little bit, but how do you feel about the supernatural in operation in some of the, the positions that aren't so glamorous, aren't so seen? So people don't say, I want supernatural uh, uh, accounting abilities. You know, I, 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 you know, I want to see <laughs> checks written that, that nobody sees, you know, like... <sighs> Is this uh, an access for all of the fivefold? You know, like because we can maybe concentrate it too much on the the guy that can speak, the guy that can lead, or or the woman that can. You know, so how do you feel about the supernatural being accessed throughout across the whole attributes of of, of those qualities? Well, it's, it's definitely something that is available to every one of us. We're called to walk in the spirit, and you know, I love that scripture. It talks about the gift making room. So as we're growing in the gifts, you know, we, we opened up talking about the importance of leadership. You know, you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and you see how Yeshua, he puts these people in place in offices. And what's the purpose? To bring the whole body to the place of maturity. And that's the purpose behind it, that we will mature, we'll move forward. And, you know, Paul was speaking to the leaders in another passage and he said, you know, uh, you know, you, you're still of the milk. Man, you're not even on the meat of the word. Why? Because you're so worldly. So we've got to identify that which is worldly. But, you know, coming back to the point of what you're you're talking about there, um, you know, I think we should be seeking and desiring mm. to walk in the Spirit. And, and yes, listen, my life is full of testimonies because I want to practice the presence of Yehovah all the time. If I'm driving, mm-hmm. if I'm whatever I'm, when we're sitting here right now, I'm asking the Ruach HaKodesh, I'm asking the Holy Spirit, what do you want to say? What are you saying? Mm-hmm. And I've learned a whole trade by the voice of God. And people might say, oh, man, Kenny Russell, you're just way out there. Man, that's just wacko crazy. What do you mean learn a trade by the voice of God? I did. I learned a trade by the voice of God. Couldn't read and write because I had businesses and I was in the music industry. And, you know, I didn't go to school when everyone else went to school. And I just got a pile of books and I said, I'm mm-hmm. going to prophesy to me in the name of Yeshua. Amen. And I picked up those books. I said, I'll start reading. I'll start learning. And, you know, and there was an anointing that comes forth. And it says in the word, you know, you do not have because you do not ask. Right. So how much do we want to walk? And I'm not talking about whack or whack. But, but this, is, this is truth. You know, this is about, you know, when you've got the Holy Spirit, you know what you have the ability to do? And I love this. You get to cheat. <laughs> You've got the answer man inside you, right? Yeah, yeah. So Jack, Jackie often calls it the cheat code. Or the it? hack in the meat. The, 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 <laughs> the cheat code to reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guide. And that's the key, isn't it? It's having uh, the ability to hear. So, what we need more than knowledge, it says in James chapter 1, if you lack wisdom, Sign up to Bible college for five years. No. Mm. <laughs> in oh, James 1, it's, if you lack wisdom, ask That's Elohim. He gives generously to all without fight and fall. It's a gift. But if you're double-minded, and, and this is where a lot of people fail because, and, and why did I walk away from God when I was 15? Because I had the church against me, I had the world against me. The church is like, settle down. What are you doing? Getting beaten up for the gospel. Why are you preaching? Just join a department in the church and just settle down. I'm like, listen, I appreciate everything you do in here, and that's great. But you know what? When you see the hurting, when you see the broken, you see what I see on the streets, I don't want to be anywhere else. Mm. And, um, you know, I think we've got to get to that place where we are pursuing him with all of our heart, with all of our soul. I want more of you, Father. I want more of you, uh, You know, that transformation is available to everyone. But if we are stuck in the flesh and we doubt, it cancels out the wisdom of the Spirit. Truly. And my prayer today is that people will receive his wisdom, even through what we are talking about, awake him up. Mm. We need to be spiritually awake. We need eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to understand. You can't live this life in the flesh. Mm. We have to live by the Spirit. So, Father, pour out your Ruach HaKodesh upon each and every one of us. We need you. We need your wisdom. And if you truly are calling and, and 
asking uh, Yeshua for his wisdom, he will give it to you. He will not withhold that from you. But the, the question is, are you just going to ask for wisdom and then go back to the flesh, the understanding of this world? Mm. Listen, I face challenges every day. And in the natural, there is no way forward. Now, I've got a choice. You know, do I panic? Do I try and work it out? You know, I've got abilities. We all have abilities, right? When it comes to God moving, he always waits past the time of when you think it's going to be okay. One example, I was in Spain it was the national repentance of King Juan in Spain in 1992. And, uh, you know, I went with uh, some prophets and stuff from the UK. And we get there, we, we actually hired a little hotel that was, I don't know, like 60, uh, 60 pounds a night. And someone called up when we're driving through to uh, Spain, to Toledo in Spain, and said, oh, we saw you were coming, and uh, we saw you were in that hotel, but you need to be in the hotel with pres- uh, with." with uh, Netanyahu and all the important people. So we just booked you in the five-star hotel in Madrid, right? And we get there, and we've got no money. We're just getting there by the, you know, by the the vapor of the Holy Spirit, you know? (laughs) And we arrive, and and so we go to this five-star hotel. I walk in, and I get on my knees in the bedroom of the, I don't know if it was like 300 euros a night per room, and we had a whole bunch of rooms. I said, Holy Spirit, do you want us here? He said, yep, this is exactly where I want you. We said, okay. So we stayed there for those days, right? And then when it came time to pay, you know, imagine walking down from that room and you got no money in your pocket and you're walking down, but you're doing what the Holy Spirit told you to do. We walked down to the reception to go up to get the bill. And as we walked down, this doctor from another country walks up and said, you know what's interesting? The Holy Spirit just told me I have to pay for (laughs) all of your bill. (laughs) Wow. He says, I just want you to go get the bill. I'm paying for all of it. You know, whatever meals you had, whatever. I'm paying for the whole lot, right? I'm thinking, man, we should have eaten a lot better. Than we did. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's learning the walk of faith. And I'm not telling people to be irresponsible, you know, and just going out and doing stupid things. You need the word of the Lord, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah um, just speaking about the gifts, Paul has we've mentioned, Paul mentions um, in scripture to eagerly desire the gifts. And of course, I spoke about earlier, we have you know, the apostles, the teachers, administration, healing, helping. Well, it's all of the same spirit. Mm. And it doesn't mean that even though you may not be a teacher, you may not teach the parshas, you may not teach the Torah, it doesn't mean you can operate in that spirit of teaching. If you're a mother, right. you're operating that spirit of teaching to your children. If you join in Kenny this week, you'd operate in the spirit of an apostle out there on the street reaching people. So, yeah, of course, we do have our strong points and, and God does call us to certain paths, but it is of all the same spirit. And I think once we understand this, I think this will give us a boldness to to step out into healing, to, to step out into miracles. It's like, look, the same spirit that's in Kenny of, of, of this all these amazing testimonies, a walking testimony. <laughs> that, 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 that spirit is in me also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I go out on the street and join him, this is what this is what our book teaches. So, you know, let's bring it on. Let's go there. And, and I think with that, I, I, that, that at least gives me comfort, knowing yeah. that the same spirit that baptized other brothers and sisters in the body baptized me also. Yeah, Peter was five alive. Paul was five alive. Yeshua was five alive. These were five alive, man. They were all five alive. Yeshua was a teacher, prophet, healer. Look, he was five alive. Same with Peter, same with Paul. Uh, And we can desire these things. And, you know, it's how close are we going to draw to God and Mm. how faithful are we going to be? And with with what we are given, what are we going to give back? And how are we going to glorify God with the most smallest of measures? Look, look at the, look at the penny that's handed in and the offering. You know what? What does it mean to you? And how much are you prepared to sacrifice? Beautiful. How, how important do you think it is, guys? That we uh, I, I said to to Kenny before that um, you know we have these reference points that we hear these testimonies that we. Uh, know and trust that these things these supernatural things do uh, take place um, how important is it to be inspired so so that we can step out in these things in the future and and 
maybe towards Jackie and, and, and Joe in more particulars, as young, you know, teachers, um, uh, do you feel a responsibility? Are you excited by the proposition of, of this merging of spirit and truth truly uh, manifesting in, in a way that the, the world has never seen? Because, uh, again, there's a lot of talk about uh, what's going on in the world, wars, famines, pestilence, rumours of wars, etc. But surely, surely we're on the cusp of a, the, one of the most amazing moves of the Holy Spirit. Um, how did, Are you excited by that? I mean, I've got my popcorn there, bro. <laughs> I, I've got me, I've got me popcorn and me 3D glasses, mate. I'm ready to go, bro. You From know, Ruth. like I've had it with the trailers. I've had it with the trailers. I wanna be in it now. Hey, we've we've you been know, doing the trailer for a few years. Long the tour, time, man. You know I'm what I mean? fed up with the commercials, bro. <laughs> Give me the substance. I'm on it, man, and I'm so hungry for it. So you. hallelujah. Yeah, it was. It's you know, it's refreshing to to see other believers so hungry and what we received at Pentecost there, these these are not points of times. The Father knows what he's doing. As the days are drawing near near now, the, the spirit's getting poured out. The fields are ripe unto harvest. And yeah, it's it's quite overwhelming really. And I guess f- for myself on a on a personal level, I do take it as it comes each day and and, and what the spirit is saying to me. If I if I stay in the book of Revelation too long, I think yeah it just starts to melt. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, of course, it's exciting. It's beautiful to see um, new roots, new shoots coming through. Uh, especially, you know, I was speaking to um, a few viewers the other day, and since lockdown, you know, as 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 the the tension rises in the world, as we hear wars and rumors of wars and this happening in this country and this rebellion and this usurp, it it only it only brings people more to God, you know. And we've seen it sitting in you know, praise be to you in the position that, that we're in, we're just seeing that the, the, the fields are getting more ripe. It's, the, you know, you can feel it in the air. The tension is, it's almost like the static in the air and it's, right. it, 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 it's ramping up and, and we welcome that because, you know, it's going to take a tribulation for a lot of people to wake up. You know, I, I, I know many friends and um, people who believe in God and they, they say, Jack, you know, I, I love what you're doing. I believe in what you're doing, but I'm not ready yet. Right. I'm, I'm like, well, that's what the tribulation is coming. And so I guess as, as, as we come towards that, that pinnacle, it is exciting because these people who are maybe on the fence, maybe unsure, as more is coming into the light, naturally the spirit is going to push them off the fence and say, come on, now it's time. And, and, and to be in a position to, to, to not only have the opportunity to preach on the street, but then also have a area to bring them people into discipleship. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's a true, it's a true honor. It's a blessing. And you know, <laughs> it's, it's if, incredible. If I could just slightly tweak that for you, Kenny, um, cause arguably every generation is going to say, <laughs> there's going to be the best, uh, the, the, end is <laughs> the Holy spirit. And the, 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 like, is there something different about this time like is it is obviously like i said you, you've been through uh, a few moves of the spirit over the years is this is there something different is there something um yeah how do you see that <laughs> or is it just the same same cycle of it's us we're the special ones i don't like, know we had methuselah sitting oh at the boy. table you know <laughs> how much time Come do on. we have to answer this <laughs> you know all i'd like to say is you just really put the emphasis on this point and that is that when i moved to israel I prayer walked the land for one and a half years, and I says, I have not come here to do my thing. I want to know what you're doing here, God, and I want to be able to hear you. And what he did is he brought alignment to the understanding of the times. What time are we living in? And what he revealed to me was how to truly understand the gospel from Genesis all the way to Revelation without the thread breaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah. it radically changed my life because I saw the order of the spirit within the day in which we're living. And, uh, you know, I, I did a, a teaching that was called, well, I just, I was at a rude awakening. Uh, 
And I, I walked in and, and uh, Michael Rood wasn't there and the, the producers were like, oh, yeah, we just got it set up and uh, we just think it's time for you to do a teach and can you give us the notes and your 25 points and your, your do you have a PowerPoint or something you want to share? And I said, uh, no, I don't have that. And they, I said, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll speak. Yeah, that's fine. And they said, well, you know, what are you going to speak on? And I'm like, well, I have no idea. I'm not, <laughs> I know my name, <laughs> you know. And uh, I just sat down, and I had to start with just my name. I had no idea what I was going to talk about. And I delivered a message, have we lost a love? And I believe that we are moving into a day of the greatest love story never told. Wow. I believe we've misinterpreted the days in which we're living. I don't care about what nuclear, what this, what mm-hmm. that, blah, 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 blah. Bible prophecy trumps it all. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't say in the Bible when the Jews come back, that uh, the Messiah will come. It says when Israel returns. And when the Holy Spirit started opening everything up, he started to show me, he said, I need you to go and study everything that the scholars and the theologians call millennial kingdom. And I want to I want you to ask key questions to the text. Number one, who is ruling over all the earth during the millennial kingdom? Yeshua. Yeshua. Where is Hasatan? He's bound for a thousand years. Mm-hmm. So what is the seventh day? It's a Sabbath. There's no war. It's a Sabbath, right? So we understand those things. So all the people are subject to Yeshua the Messiah ruling over the entire earth. You don't have strong nations. You don't have Deuteronomy chapter 30 where uh, he says, I'm going to circumcise your heart. I'm going to bring you back to Torah of the nations. I'm going to bring you back to the land of your forefathers. I'm going to make you more prosperous than your forefathers. Excuse me, Solomon, more prosperous than Solomon. Mm. (laughs) And then he says this, I'll curse those who curse you and those who come against you. So that cannot be the millennial kingdom. Mm. So I believe that what we are waiting for in this moment of time, instead of being, you know, with the number one selling books today, what is it? Revelation, the end of the world, you know, the big money crash, all those different things. And they're so exciting. Everyone gets so excited about it. Listen, I spent five years studying the book of Revelation to the level where it almost ruined my life. Right. Wow. And I went through every teacher, every stuff, everything there was to know about Revelation. I said, God, I am going to get this down. And every time I went through a teacher, I asked the Holy Spirit, is this truth? He said, no. And it wasn't until I came into Torah and the understanding of the beginning of the book that I started to realize the book of Revelation is about the feasts. Right. Um, and anyway, what I'd say is this. I'd say that... Um, This is why we're going to witness such a move of the Spirit because we are going to see one of the biggest demonstrations this world has ever seen of the love of God being poured out upon this earth. It will be so powerful that for a season, the entire world will come to a place of standstill where there will be peace on the earth. And this is not the Antichrist coming with his false peace. This is biblical order concerning prophecy, concerning what it says. And the word that changed my life and brought me back to Torah was the land deal concerning Abraham is not for the millennial kingdom it's for today. Right. And that's the word that changed my life. And what we talked about just now is we talked about where are the leaders, you know, there should be accountability. And what's important is if we have a word of the Lord, the word of Yehovah, we should be known for who we are as individuals. We, the word should be known, the word should be tested. And for 11 or so years, I've traveled the nations of the world. I've, I have went before all the theologians. I've went before thousands of people. I've said, tell me if I am wrong with this word concerning what the scripture says. And I haven't had any, well, just one drunk pastor, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in a bar when I was preaching in uh, Applebee's, you know. Oh, no, I don't believe that. I'm like, man, you just had too many whiskeys. And he's like, I need to go to bed, right? <laughs> but... <clears throat> We need to rightly divide the word of truth. And it says that God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish. But in Jeremiah chapter 31, just after he talks about the new covenant, there's an interesting scripture uh, that it says uh, that's important. It says that no one uh, will tell his neighbor, no Elohim. They will all know from the least to the youngest. Listen, we won't have to evangelize. The very fact that we have to evangelize and share the gospel is they don't know. And, uh, you know, that, you know, this is why it says in Micah chapter 4, it talks about the Lord Almighty is spoken, the Lord of hosts. Every time you see the word, the word Lord Almighty, depending on what translation of the Lord of hosts, when you see those words put in, 
It's basically saying this. It's not thus saith the Lord from the King James. It's something that you can't comprehend in your mind in the flesh, but it's something the Father says he's going to do. Right. So, yeah. Deep. Yeah, praise you, Amen. Uh, on that bombshell. <laughs> um, no, you, you, you've literally just uh, blitzed my head to the point where I don't have any questions because I was so engrossed <laughs> by what you're saying. So um, you, you, you're, you're a blessing and a curse to a podcast. So <laughs> thanks, 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 Kenny. Um, brilliant. Okay. Um, well, let's just uh, open it up. Uh, anyone else for anything else um, in terms of what we discussed? Um, yeah. Uh, I just had on my heart to speak about uh, when you were mentioning about, you know, the main gifts to the body and how some can be neglected. I think Paul really targets that, you know, when he says the lesser members can be more stronger. You know, we walk around, we're always going on about our feet and, you know, we all buy shoes and we, we want to walk comfortably and, you know, when you've got, you got a problem on the bottom of your foot or... and. That foot, without the Achille, without the Achilles tendon, no, no, no pagan suggestion intended. This is just speaking about the body. <laughs> without that, you know, you, you couldn't walk. Same with the retina in the eye. Same, same with the smaller members that actually perform the greatest duties. And Yitro come to mind because Yitro counsels Moses in operations and administrations and and in management and in leadership. And then we see a product of a nation being forged in, in a fantastic way. And, you know, he comes there and, and, and lays that spirit to counsel. And he wasn't doing s signs and wonders, but he, he counseled Moses and he gave him this word of how to have governance within the nation. And that then took the stress off Moses to be able to perform the tasks that he did. And I think these are some of the early protégés of what we see where we will, we will see a lesser member sometimes maybe even don't get the reputation it's not they're not all singing all dancing but the, but the, the, the making radical moves and you know it's it's for the edification of the body and then ultimately it's to bring the presence of God on earth but they're a cog in this watch that you might see that shiny face and that great you know them great hands moving around and wow what a masterpiece but there's a cog behind that making that tick and without them cogs in the back you know it, it, the, the watch don't tick so i just want to encourage people that feel that you know they are, they do go in the secret place and they, they're doing things behind the scenes and without without them cogs in the back it, it don't work so please don't ever feel that you know you're, you're not achieving because yeah. you're looking at someone who's given this sort of portion and you feel like you're always receiving there's so much that you're actually given, walking in his ways, intercessory prayer, you know. We know people that are praying and there's a there's a chain of intercession going on all the time right. for us. And it's like, that's so comforting and we really need that to, yeah. to happen because there's power in prayer and there's people fasting, you know. If someone says, yeah, I fasted for you, it's like, wow. Someone, someone might do something for you but if someone fasts for you, that that's huge. That's massive. You know, that these are detrimental things. If someone's gonna deny themselves of food, maybe even water, just so they can draw closer to God and empty themselves so they can focus on you. That's amazing. You know, that's uh, I just want to encourage people because you you can operate in the spirit of counsel, even just being an active listener. It may not necessarily be what, what comes out of your mouth. It's just opening your ears to hear someone and you may just have that one word. Or you may be able to just steer them in the right way, and that 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 can be a blessing to, to the body of Christ. Amazing, um, Kenny. For you, um, like I said, you 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 get about a bit. You've seen some stuff. Uh, you've well, we've been fortunate and blessed enough to to be in your company over the last week or so, uh, and to see you operate in your gifts and your calling. Um, we're obviously we glean a lot from that and we're greatly encouraged and inspired and like i said as a reference point to see this in action it's it's uh it's incredible for us to to see that and uh, uh, an aim and a target for us to to pray for and walk in 
does it encourage you to see like younger folk? <laughs> the greys are coming through, but like, <laughs> watch yourself, Dad. What, is, what does that do for you as you go around and you see you see younger guys, or you see folks who are hungry for the truth and hungry for the spirit? What does that do for you personally? Like, you know, because yeah, wow. surely, like, you must have times in your walk where you're like, oh Lord, like, what's going on? Come on! But is how have you found it being around ourselves and, and other other ministries as you travelled? Yeah, it's. Um, that's a great question because it's so important because it's not about just me or it's not about us as individuals. It's about the body. And when we see the body functioning, that's what I want to see more than anything. Um, you know, I don't want people to come to the tent because someone's there that's known or they do whatever. But, you know, they, sh- they should be able to come and people can minister and and. The joy of what I witness is I see people who come in fear and trembling sometimes thinking, <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. I've got a guy flying in uh, you know, from another country uh, in a few days. Uh, and he's like, I don't know why I'm doing this. This is just totally out of the box. But I've just got to come and get on the streets and do some outreach. And it's amazing because I believe that we, when we are doing the work of the Spirit together as the body, it brings encouragement. It brings life. And we need to operate as the body. So it's such a blessing when I see people, uh, you know, operating and praying for people and seeing miracles and things that are happening. And, you know, look, you know, I've seen tons of miracles. I've seen incredible things happen. But when you see people standing at the tent and they're just praying for their brother and his eyes are totally healed right there. And he's like, oh, throw the glasses away. Mm. You know, he, walk, he walked up to me and says, where do I go to get these fixed? And I'm giving them directions to get an optician. The other guy's thinking, I'm praying for him to get wow. healed. <laughs> you know, but hallelujah. It's, it's such a blessing. We are the body. We need each other. And we need to have the body activated to do the will of Yehovah. Hallelujah. Um yeah, so just a reminder, guys, we walk in the same resurrection power that raised Yeshua from the dead and That's ascended right. him to the Most High yeah. God. We've been seated with him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. We have every spiritual gift, access to the throne room of Whoa. God. Like, <laughs> <laughs> come on. Yes. Come on. <laughs> guy, like, is it? Let's, let's, just, let's just remind and encourage the, the, the body where we are. Oh, man. What we're on the cusp of, that Yeshua is returning to take a, a spotless bride mm. back mm. to an eternal rest. And we'll reign with him for a thousand years in the millennial reign Hallelujah. and the Torah yeah. shall go forth yeah. from Mount Zion. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Like, guys, like, snap out of the depression. Come out of the, the, the self-pity. Don't worry about the bank account. Don't worry about what your boss is telling you in your performance. What is the the boss thinking about your performance? And we know that this isn't about our works, but faith about works is dead and it's time to wake up and I say it to myself. So guys, like if you take anything away, it's get into the secret place. Yeah. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and you shall receive. And I'm 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 preaching to myself right now. I I, I really am because I want more. Like, do we want more? Oh man. You know, oh, man. do we want to go deeper Amen. into his word? Do we want more knowledge? Do we want more understanding? Do we want wisdom? Do we want counsel? You know, th- these are serious questions because he's waiting to give it to us, surely. Yes. He's waiting to give it to his children. Yeah. We're, and we're, we're children of the Most High God, yeah. so I just want to remind, like, who you are, who, who we are. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. So, um, can, yeah, I make, I just, can I make a yeah, point yeah, on go, what go, you go, just go. said there? Because this, this is vitally important. You know, when, when we're nurturing children and, uh, you know, you always hear someone coming along saying to the little kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, this mentality. And we look at what's happening in the natural, but you study the scriptures and you look at who the father calls and what he calls them to do. He doesn't call them to do everything that they are naturally gifted and talented to do. When he speaks forth that word, so you might be uh, thinking, well, you know, we're hearing all these testimonies, all this stuff, and look, maybe you're in that place of discipleship where the Holy Spirit is revealing who you are in yeah. him. Yeah. Right, yeah. And it is okay to be in that place. That's right, yeah. You know, because we're talking here as leaders, we're talking here, you know, of, of many years walking in the Spirit, you know, it's, it's okay to be in that place. Don't stay where you are. 
you know, it's not about how much faith can you get. You know, go down to McDonald's, I'll have an extra large faith. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need you need faith if you're going to eat at McDonald's. Yeah, of course. <laughs> double faith, Mac. <laughs> get yourself a double <laughs> faith, Mac. <laughs> but, you know, the faith the size of a mustard seed is going to do it all. Mm. So what do we need? We need to believe. So do we believe the account of who Yeshua says we are and what we are called to do? So don't und- don't sit and think, well, I just don't know where I'm at right now, what I'm called to do. I want to do things and I see what other people are doing. Well, the lesson that we have to learn is, is like you said, going to the secret place and being found in the presence of God. And when we spend time around other believers who are walking in the gifts, guess what, man? There's an impartation that takes place. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, there's, a, there, there's something that happens within our lives because of those who are around us. You know, we want to be around people that are building our faith, encouraging us to the next level because they can see pitfalls and help us in the midst of that growth spurt that we have mm. in the spirit. But never underestimate the power of what the spirit can do within your life. Yeah. Because what you are facing and where you are today, you might look at your circumstances and say, well, I'd love to do things and exploits for God, but, you know, I'm just not in that place right now. I've got all this, I've got all that. Once I get fixed, and then <laughs> maybe God can use me. But what he's saying is, listen, there's suddenlies that happen. Mm. And when you receive that word, it changes everything. And this is the day to be transformed in the spirit. And we just cancel the assignments of the enemy. We break the assignments of the enemy. Whose report do we believe? Are we going to believe the report of the Lord or the report of the enemy? Mm. So we lift up our eyes to the mountains. Where does our help come from? What an amazing statement David makes when he says that. You know, what he's basically saying is, I'm so far down and being pushed down by everybody. There's no one standing with me. The only thing, testimony I can hold on to is to lift my eyes and know that the God of creation has called me by name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. And and meditating on that resurrection power. We've been out in the park there, and it's a hot spot, Birkenhead. It's it's a a tough area, but we found a real nice, beautiful, sweet spot. But I seen I seen a couple of the our bandits, you know, a couple of a few of the allies from Babylon. <laughs> seen a couple of them, <laughs> and you know what they swear me, and they, and you see them going past, and and I know what they're thinking, and and the word whips round, you know, and 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 they're saying this kid here, hey, he believes he's gonna wake up when he dies. He believes he's gonna get raised from the dead. That lad over there thinks he's gonna come back to life when he dies. You can't beat that man. You can't beat that man. Nothing. What what can you give to that person? Nothing. You can't beat that man. That man's bulletproof. Mm. You know, and, they, and they're all this and that, yeah, and into all sorts of stuff. But that man is bulletproof because they have a hope and an expectation. And moving an expectation, we have to focus on the resurrection and the resurrection power that, yeah, look, He's going to raise us up. You know, we shall not all see death. Oh, death, where art thou sting? Been swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. So Praise that's God. where victory is found, in the resurrection power. And we, we need to be focused on that because you cannot beat that person. Mm. Not even death can beat that person. Yeah. Hallelujah. Um, any final thoughts, gentlemen? I think uh, I think the spirit said what it needs to say. Um, Hallelujah. I just like to say John 15 verse 26. It's just the scripture that just keeps coming to me. Uh, it says but when the helper comes whom I will send to you from the father mm. the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father he will bear witness about me. And we're not just talking about spiritual things to talk about we're talking about what is bear bore witness of Yeshua? It's not right. about us. It's not about yeah. any of these things. Yeah. It's about Yeshua, and that's who we fix our eyes on. Amen. Oh, Amen. Um, yeah, Kenny. Um, I, I can't express my gratitude uh, enough. Um, it's been uh, more than a pleasure. Um, it's been a, a learning curve, and. Uh, not only just in terms of your exploits out on the field, but trying to understand your native tongue. Uh, it's, it's always <laughs> a challenge to a southerner like myself. Uh, but no, truly, it's been beautiful. Um, yeah. 
yeah, I, I just I can't actually wait to see this one back to take it in. But um, yeah, I just really hope and pray that again that this um, edifies this en- this encourages you. Um, again, if you uh, if you feel touched by anything that we've uh, spoken of uh, today, um, feel free to get in contact with us at the Almond House or with Kenny uh, Bulldo- Bulldozer Faith. And um, yeah, we just uh, sincerely hope that this uh, this conversation blesses you. Um, so from our house to yours, uh, Shalom, uh, we love you lots and uh, blessings in the mighty name of Yeshua. And if one of you, uh, dear brothers, would be kind to close in some prayer, that would be much appreciated. Abba Yah, we come before you now as vessels, Father, emptying ourselves, Father, known as more, Father, to life than the pleasures and desires of this world, Father. That there is a kingdom that is coming. That Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is en route to this earth. And he'll reward those each according to his work. So Abba Yah, let us not grow stale of work, Father. The same spirit that is in Moses, Father, the same spirit that moved through Yeshua, that moves through us, that moves through the believers of the well, Father, the Kenny Russells, Father, those online, the, these, these pastors, Father, can move through us, Father. So, Father, we pray for the Holy Spirit now, Father, for those who are listening online, for us in the room, Father, we say, come, we invite you. Mm. Come into our temple, Father. Come into our body, Father. Fill us. Talk to us, teach us, guide us, uplift us. We pray, Father, that you'll make us a good and faithful servant who comes out of the religious systems, not only to step into another one, but to walk the walk of spirit and truth, of spirit and your law. To not strain either to the right or to the left, but to be en route to your promised land. The seventh day, the rest, your Sabbath, where you will reign for a thousand years. Blessed is those in the first resurrection because the second death will have no power over them. Father, we desire to be in that first resurrection. We desire to be priests. We desire for your Holy Spirit, Father, to touch not only us but to others. Make us well, Father, so we can attend to others, to attend others, Father, we pray. And in the word we read, when we are made weak, you are made strong. Let us meditate on them words. Let us know that this is a walk and not a race. Let us meditate on that even in our weakness, we can save you. So, Father, Abba Yah, we just pray for Kenny and his, tr- his, and his travels. We bless him, Father, this day. Mm. Whatever he next goes, whatever he, what flight ticket he has in mind or you have in mind, should I say. Father, we pray that the spirit that he's felt here at Almond House, Father, your spirit, we pray for a portion on him, Father. We pray a portion from Joe, a portion from me, from Darren, from our fellowship, Father, what he has felt. From the spirit and truth, Father, I pray that he takes that with him, Father. And that he shows that this can be done. That this is not just a religion. That this can be walked with a relationship. And that we can have the self-control, the guidance of the law, but the flow of the spirit. The, The overflowing of the spirit, the abundance of the spirit. That it can be done. Father, we pray. For that day, Father, where you will, you will send your son to teach us how to walk this line, Father, this tightrope, Father. But until that day, Holy Spirit guide us. Ruach HaKadosh guide us. In Yeshua's name we pray. Yeshua. Amen. Amen.